The peptide world has completely changed. Research peptide companies are shutting down right now. You see, the FDA enforcement, it's wrapping up and new legislation was just introduced into Congress. If you're using peptides or you're thinking about it, you need to understand what's actually happening right now. Not the hype, not the fear mongering, but the real situation. Because here's the thing that most people are getting wrong. They're hearing that peptides are getting banned and they're panicking or they're ignoring it completely and hoping that it doesn't affect them. Both of those are dire mistakes. The truth is more nuanced. Some things are changing, some sources are disappearing, but peptides themselves, they're not going anywhere. The question is whether you understand the new landscape well enough to make smart decisions. And that's what I'm here to help you out with today. Hi, I'm Dr. Jones DC, and I coach thousands of patients on peptide optimization. And I work alongside medical practitioners who prescribe these compounds through legitimate 503A compounding pharmacies. I've been in this space for years through my own 100 pound weight loss journey, using these peptides as tools and then helping patients navigate what actually works. I've seen the research peptide side and I've seen the pharmaceutical grade side and I respect that you're here because you're taking control of your own health. That's not easy. It takes initiative. My job today isn't to scare you or tell you what to do. My job is to give you the complete updated picture, what's changing, what the risks actually are and what your options look like heading into 2026. What you do with that information is totally up to you. So let me break down the top 10 peptides that actually matter the most right now. For each one, I'll tell you what it does, what the research shows, and how people are actually accessing it, both through research sources and through legitimate medical channels. And by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what's happening in this space and how to think about your own decisions. Whether you're brand new to peptides or whether you've been using them for years, this is information that you need to know right now. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the rankings, you need to understand what's actually happening with peptide access because there's a lot of noise out there and I want you to have the facts. Here's the timeline. June, 2025, one of the largest research peptide vendors, Amino Asylum, shut down due to increased FDA scrutiny. The website went down, orders froze, and that was the first major signal that enforcement was changing. December 2024 rolled around, and the FDA issued warning letters to multiple research peptide vendors, Prime Peptide, Summit Research, Swiss Chems, and others for selling GLP-1 products labeled for research purposes only that were clearly being marketed for human use. And then late 2024, through early 2025, the FDA resolved the drug shortages and updated compounding policies that fundamentally changed peptide access. And then December 9th, 2025, just a few days ago, new legislation called the Safe Drugs Act was introduced in Congress to further restrict compounded versions of GLP-1 medications. The result, research peptide vendors, many of them will be shutting down by the end of this year as enforcement escalates. That's the reality, but here's what that does not mean. It does not mean all peptides are banned. It does not mean you can't access these compounds anymore. But what it means is the landscape is splitting into two distinct paths. So let me explain both honestly. So path one is research peptide, lower cost, no prescription needed, direct access. The trade-off is quality varies significantly. There's no regulatory oversight, which means you're trusting the vendor completely. FDA testing has found significant issues with dosing accuracy and purity in many of these products, and the legal landscape is tightening. So factor that into your decisions. And then path number two is 503A compounding pharmacies. These are state licensed facilities that require a prescription from a licensed provider. They follow strict pharmaceutical safety standards and they contain pharmaceutical grade ingredients. The trade-off is higher cost and you need medical relationship in order to access them. Neither path is wrong, they have different risks and different reward profiles. What matters is that you understand what you're choosing. Informed decision beats blind decisions every single time. Now, let me give you the actual rankings, the 10 peptides that matter the most heading into 2026, starting with the metabolic heavyweights in tier number one. So tier one is the metabolic foundation. These are the weight loss peptides that have genuinely changed the game. These guys right here, the most powerful tools that we have for appetite regulation and metabolic health. Let's start with number one, terzepatide. Now you might know this as Monjaro for diabetes or Zetbound for weight loss and obesity, and it's number one for a reason. 
Terzepatide is a dual agonist. It works both on the GLP-1 and the GIP receptors. Think of these as two different switches in your body that control appetite and metabolism. And Terzepatide flips both of them instead of just one, one being semaglutide or ozempic and wagovi. In our clinic, we often see patients who switch from semaglutide to Terzepatide break through plateaus that they've been stuck at for months. Real world data supports this. Terzepatide consistently shows greater weight loss in comparative studies. The appetite suppression is stronger. The metabolic effects are more pronounced. And the weight loss results in the trials, we're talking 20 plus percent of body weight reduction. Those are hard to argue with. This is the current gold standard for metabolic weight loss. If you're serious about results, terzepatide is where the conversation starts. Now, if you're watching this thinking that you want access to terzepatide or any of these peptides through pharmaceutical grade channels with proper protocols and medical supervision, that's exactly what we offer our free discovery calls for. You can either text the number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description to connect with one of our patient advocates. But even if that's not your path right now, let me keep breaking down the list. Number two, semaglutide. Now that is Ozempic and Wagovi. This is the OG, baby. The one that started the entire GLP-1 revolution. Semaglutide has more clinical data behind it than any other GLP-1 med. We know more about this compound, its effects, its safety profile, its long-term outcomes than anything else in this category. And that matters. The results aren't quite as strong as terzepatide for most people, but here's what surprises most patients. Semaglutide can sometimes work better for people who are sensitive to terzepatide medication effects. The slower titration, the longer track record, we know exactly how to manage it. We're talking 15 to 70% body weight loss in the trials, and it typically has the broadest insurance coverage, an extensive safety track record, and the most prescriber familiarity. For a lot of people, semaglutide is all they need proven, reliable, and well understood. If terzepatide isn't accessible or affordable for your situation, semaglutide is an outstanding option. Same access pathways as terzepatide, FDA approved with compounding availability changes as shortages resolve. Now, if you're finding this breakdown helpful, the honest look at what these peptides actually do and how to access them, hit that subscribe button right now because we put out four videos per week on peptides, metabolic health, GLP-1s, how to navigate this space, and more importantly, it helps with the channel big time. <laughs> so go ahead and hit that button right now. Number three is where it gets really interesting, Redditrutide, the triple G. This is the one generating the most excitement in the peptide world right now, with good reason. Redditrutide is a triple agonist, GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon receptor activation. Three pathways instead of just two. The phase two trials showed up to 24% weight loss, and recently phase three data from the Triumph 4 showed even higher up to 28.7% in 68 weeks. That makes it potentially the most powerful weight loss compound ever studied. Now here's the access reality. Redditrutide is not FDA approved yet. FDA approval is expected sometime in 26 or 27 based on trial completion timeline. But right now, some people are accessing it through research chemical sources or prescriptions from compounded 503A sources. But understand that it's not proven for human use yet. Compounding access is going to vary state by state. If you are trying to get your hands on it, make sure you get it from a 503A source. The data is extraordinary. If you're accessing it now, just understand what source you're using it and the legal and quality trade offs involved. Make it an informed decision. Do you want me to do a complete deep dive video on Reddit TrueTide, specifically the clinical data, the protocols, what to look for? Let me know in the comments if that would be helpful to you. All right, those are your metabolic heavyweights. Now let's talk about healing and recovery in the regenerative peptide category tier two. So tier two is regenerative peptides for healing, recovery, and tissue repair, BBC 157, TB500, GHK copper. These are some of the most talked about compounds in the biohacking community and for good reason. So number four, BBC 157 or body protection compound. I get asked about this one constantly. BBC 157 is a peptide originally derived from gastric juices and in animal studies, it promotes healing, gut healing, tendon repair, tissue regeneration, accelerated injury recovery. The mechanisms involve stimulating your body's natural repair signals and building new blood vessels, basically helping damaged tissues heal faster. Now I need to be straight with you. Most of this research is in animal studies. Human clinical trials are still extremely limited. Fewer than five published studies actually, all small scale. But what patients report does align with the animal research, faster healing from injuries, improved gut issues, reduced inflammation. Let me give you a real example. Maria, one of our patients came to a with a solid foundation. She was hitting the gym five days a week, perfect macros, terzepatide at therapeutic doses. She was doing everything right and she was barely losing weight. Her labs told us the real story though. Inflammatory markers were through the roof. Gut issues were driving systemic inflammation. So part of her protocol, my doctors prescribed BPC-157 for gut healing. Animal studies show that 157 promotes tissue repair and reduced inflammation. And what patients like Maria report 
matches the science. Within weeks, her energy came back, the weight started removing again. The 157 wasn't the whole solution, but addressing her gut health helped everything else work better. Now here's where sources matter significantly. Pharmaceutical grade BPC-157 from a 503A pharmacy versus research peptides. You're getting very different levels of quality assurance. This is something that you're injecting into your body. If you're going to go the research route, know your vendor, understand the trade-offs. Okay, number five, TB-500. This is a synthetic fragment derived from thymus and beta-4. This one pairs naturally with the 157. TB-500 and BBC-157 appear to work through different mechanisms. So the 500 distributes systemically throughout the body. And in animal studies, it supports soft tissue repair and also helps reduce inflammation systemically. This is why you hear them called as together the Wolverine stack. BPC for localized support, TB for systemic recovery. And what patients report aligns with the animal research as well. Faster recovery from injuries, improved mobility, reduced chronic pain. Human clinical trials are limited, but the animal studies are promising. Access follows the same pattern that we've discussed, research sources or 503A pharmacies with prescriptions. Okay, number six, GHK copper, the copper peptide. This might be the most underrated peptide by far. This one flies under the radar, but it deserves attention. GHK copper is primarily known for skin health, hair growth, wound healing, collagen simulation. What's interesting is it actually has solid human data for skin and wound healing applications, not just animal studies. The other advantage is versatility. It's available in topical formulations. Think high-end skincare products and injectable forms. So you can access GHK Copper through regular skincare products, research sources, or 503A pharmacies, depending on what form you want. This is the beauty peptide that is actually backed by real science not just marketing hype. I got a question for you. Which of these peptides have you actually tried? What was your experience? Let me know in the comments. Real experiences help everybody here learn. Okay, metabolic support covered. Regenerative healing compounds covered. What about optimization? Growth hormone, body composition, anti-aging, that's tier three. So we increase our growth hormone, we improve our body composition, and we just age slower. These are the compounds for people who built the foundation and they wanna go further. So number seven, CJC-1295 with ipomorelin, the classic growth hormone stack. This combination stimulates pulsatile growth hormone release. What it means is that it mimics your body's natural growth hormone patterns, the way that you produce growth hormone when you were younger. CJC-1295 extends that signal. Ipomorelin triggers the release. Together, they work synergistically. The benefits that patients report go beyond just body improvements. Improved sleep quality, that's a big one that patients notice. Better recovery from workouts, enhanced fat mobilization, muscle preservation, especially important when you're in a calorie deficit and you're trying to lose weight. These effects align with what we know about growth hormone optimization. Of course, large clinical trials specifically on this combination are still limited. Most people get this entirely wrong. They think growth hormone optimization is only for bodybuilders or athletes, but it's not. Sleep, recovery, metabolic function, these matter for everybody. This stack has been a go-to for anti-aging and general optimization for years. Access follows the same pattern we've discussed, research sources or 503A pharmacies with medical prescription. Okay, number eight, Samorolin. This was the OG growth hormone peptide. See, Samorolin is a growth hormone releasing hormone. It stimulates your pituitary to produce more of its own GH. The profile isn't as potent, anywhere close to CJC ipomorelin, but it is got an excellent safety record and decades of clinical use behind it. For people who want growth hormone optimization with a more conservative, well-studied approach, Samorolin is a solid starting point. It's actually one of the more accessible growth hormone peptides through legitimate channels. Okay, number nine, AOD9604, the fat fragment. This one gets mixed reviews and I wanna be honest about it. AOD9604, it's a fragment of growth hormone, specifically the portion that affects fat metabolism without the other effects of the full growth hormone molecule. The idea is enhanced fatty mobilization without impacting blood sugar or other growth hormone pathways. And I'll be straight with you, the results vary significantly from patient to patient. The patients that see dramatic changes in stubborn fat areas, belly fat, love handles, the places that won't budge, those are the ones that use it correctly. And of course, I'm gonna get into that. But others, they might see minimal effect. The pattern that I've noticed, it works best for people who are willing to put in the work. Strategic fasting protocols, insulin controlling methods like low carbohydrate eating, ketogenic eating, carnivore eating, and lots of fasting. I rank it number nine because it's a supporting player, valuable for the right situation, but not transformative on its own. Okay, number 10 is gonna be different. It's not available yet, but here's why it matters anyways. Number 10, Cagri Sema. This one isn't available, but it's potentially the most important peptide to understand if you're thinking about the future of this space. Now, Cagri Sema is semaglutide combined with calgrillantide. Calgrillantide mimics a hormone called amylin that works on a completely different pathway than GLP-1. 
one that affects how full you feel after eating. So you're getting two powerful mechanisms in one single injection. The redefined trials are showing impressive results around 22.7% weight loss in people without diabetes and 15.7% in people with type 2 diabetes. For people who plateau on current GLP-1 meds, this represents the next level. When Cagri Summit becomes available and the FDA decision is expected sometime in 2026, it's going to change the conversation about what's possible with medical weight loss. I'm including it at number 10 because even though you can't access it yet, this is where the science is going and it's worth watching. Now here's what most people miss about this entire list. And honestly, this matters more than any single peptide ranking. The landscape is shifting. More enforcement, tighter regulations, more scrutiny on research peptide sources, that's real. But peptides, they're not going anywhere. If anything, they're becoming more mainstream, more studied, more options emerging through legitimate medical channels. More physicians are learning about these compounds. Access to pharmaceutical grade peptides is expanding for people who want that path. The opportunity is actually growing. It's not shrinking. Your approach matters though, whether you're using research peptides or pharmaceutical grade, education and informed decision-making separate good outcomes from bad ones. Stay informed, know your options, make decisions that fit your situation and your risk tolerance. Now, if you want me to do a complete deep dive on any of these peptides, the protocols, the research, what to look for, let me know in the comments which one will be helpful to you and I'll make that video next. Now, before I wrap this up, here's the bigger principle that matters more than any single peptide on this list. The question I get most often, what is the best peptide or stack? And honestly, it's the wrong question. See, here's something I tell every single patient. Peptides amplify a good lifestyle. They don't fix a broken one. If your foundation isn't solid, your sleep, your diet, your exercise, your stress, then no peptide or peptide stack will save you. Single peptides can be powerful. Stacks can be even more powerful, but the best results come from matching peptides to your specific goals, combining them strategically with a proper metabolic foundation healing support with peptides like BPC-157 and TB-500 if you need it, and an optimization layer with peptides like CJC, IPA, or Samorolin, body composition support with peptides like AOD as a potential add-on. Now, let me give you an example. Robert came to us exercising five days a week. He lost 25 pounds his first month on Trazepatide. Then he completely stalled at 10 milligrams by the fourth month. Instead of pushing higher doses, our medical practitioners cut his doses in half and focused on lifestyle. Now he maintains on two and a half milligrams every two weeks. His words, I'm in control now, not dependent upon the medications. And that's what smart peptide use looks like. The real variable, it's your goals, your health history, your budget, your risk tolerance. There's no one size fits all here. And I need to be clear about that. What matters most is understanding what these compounds do, using them strategically and making choices that fit your situation. That's true whether you're sourcing from research sites or whether you're working with medical providers, peptides are powerful tools. The outcomes depend on how you use them. Now, if you're someone who wants to take the guesswork out of this entirely, pharmaceutical grade peptides through legitimate 503A pharmacies, proper protocols, medical supervision, and a team that helps you build strategic approach for your specific goals, that's what we offer. You can either text number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description to connect with one of our patient advocates. They're gonna walk through your health history, what you've tried before, your long-term goals, and you'll get a feel for what it's like to work with me, our coaches, and our medical team. They'll review programs and pricing so you can see what long-term success could actually look like. But even if that's not where you're at right now, maybe the cost doesn't work, maybe you wanna keep doing your own thing, I hope this video gave you information that you needed to make better peptide decisions for your health. If you guys wanna learn more about what I think is the most underrated peptide, a deep dive specifically into GHK copper, check out this video right there, guys. <laughs> we'll see you later.